that says president is now a king. So here's what Justice Sonia Sotomayor said. Uh, she was joined by Elena Kagan and Katanji Brown Jackson. Delivered sharply worded dissent saying the ruling effectively creates a law free zone around the president. Quote, when he uses his official powers in any way under the majority's reasoning, he now will be insulated from criminal prosecution. Orders the Navy's SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival? Immune. Orders a military coup to hold on to power? Immune. Takes a bribe to exchange for a pardon? Immune, immune, immune. So did my Oro. In every use of official power, the president is now king above the law. Here's the problem. It's not just limited to Trump. See, everybody's fear-mongering about Trump. I'm talking about all the former presidents, the current president, whoever wins uh, in November, whether it be Biden, Trump, or third party, whoever, and then down the line from there. The Supreme Court made a landmark decision yesterday involving the powers of the presidency and you need to know about it. So we're going to go into this right now. And a lot of people are focused on Donald Trump, but I think this is bigger than Trump. Let's get into this. It's a doozy, y'all. We're going to get out of that commercial break because we have word that the Supreme Court has issued a ruling on the extent of presidential immunity from criminal prosecution for conduct alleged to involve official acts during the tenure of President Trump. This is the big one we've been waiting for. It's consequential. It's really interesting that the Supreme Court in 248 years of our history has never actually ruled on this. So it is big and sweeping. And I have our political panel looking over this right now. Andy McCarthy, uh, Chief Justice John Roberts has the writing on this. He's got the pen. Is that significant? It's very significant. Uh, this is the most important case of the term in terms of the long term interests of the executive branch, in terms of the long, the short term interests of Trump, Donald Trump. And it looks like at least within the bounds of clear executive authority, what Chief Justice Roberts is saying is that the president clearly has immunity from prosecution. Mm. So the question is going to be again, I, and I, I think Trey underscored this before is what is an official act there's going to be a lot of litigation about that and what's close to the core of clear executive constitutional authority versus the outer ambit of it brett do we have uh shannon is she she um going through the paperwork shannon you there yes yes i am here if you can hear me um let me read you a little bit of what we have from the court um, it does find this under a constitutional structure of separated powers, the nature of presidential power entitles a former president to absolute immunity for from criminal prosecution for actions within his conclusive and preclusive constitutional authority. He is entitled to at least presumptive immunity from prosecution for all his official acts. There is no immunity for unofficial acts. That's the first blush we've got on this. It is. It looks like a six to three split. We've got the dissent by Justice Sotomayor. So, meaning, whatever he does, or she does, whatever president does, so a lot of people are going into. Oh my God, this is going to be horrible because if President Trump becomes president again, I'm thinking because everybody's focused on Trump. I'm thinking, well. If this is the case, then what about all of the war crimes that were done by Clinton, by Bush, by Obama, by Trump, and by Biden? What about all of those war crimes that they committed? Now, they're all immune because they were president? That means that they could have, they could carry, literally carry out murders because they were president. The crimes that WikiLeaks via uh, Julian Assange had uncovered 
those war crimes, you mean to tell me that men like this are immune from them? You mean to tell me that? This is what's wrong with this country. And you can tag this to Trump all you want, but here's the thing. Biden still got six more months in office, meaning that he can do whatever the hell he wants for, for the next six months. And nobody can hold them into account for it as long as it's, you know, official office of the president activity. <laughs> Which means he can't be held accountable. Just like there's qualified immunity for police officers, I guess there's qualified immunity for, for presidents. Oh boy. Let's continue. We've got the dissent by Justice Sotomayor, Kagan, and Jackson join that. There is a kind of split decision on some of these. Somebody joins in one part, not in another part, but that's the overall holding of the court. So what it means now, we'll have to dig in the, into this and see if they tell us now, how do you decide an official act versus an unofficial act? Because that's going to be critical, having now said the president does have an absolute immunity from criminal prosecution for actions within his conclusive and preclusive constitutional authority. We'll dig in, see how they define those official acts and look for a little bit more from you from the opinion. But at first blush, this looks like it is going to be a win for the argument for presidential immunity when it comes to allegations of criminal activity. What's interesting is that, you know, I'm sure if you're the Biden White House, you're paying close attention to this as well, <laughs> because uh, in the situation that we find ourselves in, uh, in the utilization of the justices in po politics. Um, let me go to you, Jonathan Turley, for a reaction to this decision so far. Well, this is along the lines of what many of us anticipated, that the court uh, did not go with absolute immunity on everything, but did say that there's absolute immunity when it comes to core constitutional powers. Uh, we're still going through the opinion to see if there's any assistance on where that line is to be drawn. Uh, this case is going to have to go back to the district court, which is going to have to try to uh, sort of thread this needle to determine what in the case uh, would not fall under these protections. But this is obviously a win for uh, President Trump in the sense that the special counsel was arguing, as with the lower court, uh, that there was very little immunity here to be concerned with. The, the counsel for the government was assuring the court that they really didn't have much to be concerned with here in terms of any changes in the status of the case. That's clearly not what won the day. The court here is saying that we do need lines here drawn uh, to protect presidents so they have some breathing room. And you have to sort of wonder how the context affected the uh, justices. I mean, if they want to look at the implications of leaving presidents without protection. Uh, they just need to look around the country. Uh, even though Manhattan was not a uh, federal case, it was a political prosecution in the view of many of us that was rather raw and open. And so this is uh, a, a context that must have concentrated the minds of these justices as they did what Justice Gorsuch said and tried to write for the ages to have something not for this case, but for future cases and future presidents. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And All right. So that's the overall gist of what's going on in regards to presidential powers being uh, immune when it comes to official presidential activity. Let's get into the nuts and bolts of this as well. It says U.S. Supreme Court rules Trump has immunity for official, not private acts. This came out yesterday. It says the U.S. Supreme Court found on Monday that Donald Trump cannot be prosecuted for any actions that were within his constitutional powers as president, but can for private acts. In a landmark ruling recognizing for the first time any form of presidential immunity for prosecution. I want to say this again. If they can apply this to Trump, that means they can apply this to any other president, including, including former presidents. Remember, Trump is a former president. So therefore, 
he cannot be prosecuted for any of the official things that he done, including war crimes, that means it cannot be done to Obama. It cannot be done to Trump, uh, to Bush. It cannot be done to Clinton. Hell, it can't be done to Carter. So with that being said, when it comes to actually indicting them for war crimes, for which I argue every single one of them have done, according to the United States Supreme Court, they're immune from it. So therefore, when it comes to them, as long as this official presidential business, the rule of law does not apply. This goes beyond Trump. And a lot of liberals are going to be fear mongering about Trump. And my thing is, what about the, the last six months of Biden? Because Biden, for all intents and purposes, moves and behaves just like Trump. There is really not much difference. What about the murder of Anwar Awalaki? I hope I didn't virtue his name, but U.S. citizen and murder his 16 year old son, who was also a United States citizen. That's what Obama did. And he can't be held liable for that because it's official business of the president. You got to remember something. The president is the commander in chief of the United States Armed Forces. Meaning that if the president approves of and orders a war crime, therefore, he or she cannot be held criminally liable for what they do. Meaning, if another Hiroshima or Nagasaki happens, the president can't be held liable. Yes, am I going that extreme? Yes, is it hyperbolic? No, because we did it before. But they can't be held liable because they're immune. The funding of a genocide, they cannot be held liable because now they're immune. This is why we talk about getting rid of this capitalist system. Let's continue. It says the justices in a 6-3 ruling authored by Chief Justice John Roberts throughout a lower court's decision that had rejected Trump's claim of immunity from federal criminal charges involving his efforts to undo the 2020 election loss to Joe Biden. The six conservative justices were in the majority while its three liberal members dissented. Trump is a Republican candidate challenging Biden, a Democrat in the November 5th U.S. election in 2020 rematch. The Supreme Court's slow handling of the case, coupled with its decision to return key questions about the scope of Trump's immunity to lower courts to resolve, make it improbable that he will be tried on the election subversion charges brought by special counsel Jack Smith charges before the election. We conclude that under our constitutional structure of separated powers, the nature of presidential power requires that a former president have some immunity from criminal prosecution for official acts during his tenure in office. That was from Justice Roberts. Immunity for former presidents is absolute with respect to their core constitutional powers, Roberts wrote. And a former president has at least a presumptive immunity for acts within the outer perimeter of his official responsibility, meaning that prosecutors face a high legal bar to overcome that presumption. Robert cited the need for presidents to execute the duties of his office fearlessly and fairly without threat of prosecution. Here's my thing. <clears throat> Shouldn't the president be held to a higher standard? Am I crazy for that? Shouldn't you be held to even more stricter standards than the average person? 
because you literally hold the life of thousands, if not millions of people in your hands. And by the, by the people, I'm not just talking about our service members. I'm also talking about people in other countries. You literally have the nuclear codes. You literally hold the world in your hand. Surely you should be held to a higher standard. But no, the Supreme Court said, <laughs> you, 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 you got it all, baby. It's all on you. As long as it's done within the official office of the president, eh, you're, you're good. As for the president's unofficial act, Robert said there is no immunity. Trump hailed the court ruling in a social media post, writing, big win for our constitution and democracy, proud to be an American. The court analyzed four categories of conduct contained in Trump's indictment. They are his discussion with U.S. Justice Department officials following the election, his alleged pressure on then Vice President Mike Pence to block congressional certification of Biden's win, his alleged role in assembling uh, fake pro-Trump electors to be used in the certification process and his conduct related to the 1-6-2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol by his supporters. The outcome gave Trump too much, I'm oh, sorry, the outcome gave Trump much of what he sought, but stopped short of allowing absolute immunity for all official acts, as his lawyers always advocated. And said that the court specified that actions within the president's exclusive sphere of constitutional authority enjoy such a shield, while those taken outside of these exclusive powers are only presumptively immune. The court found Trump was absolutely immune for conversations with Justice Department officials. Trump is also presumptively immune regarding his interactions with Pence. It decided, but returned that and the two other categories to lower courts to determine whether Trump has immunity. The ruling marked the first time since the nation's 18th century founding that the Supreme Court has declared that former presidents may be shielded from criminal charges in any instance. The court's conservative majority includes three justices appoint, Trump appointed. The court's decision, I'm sorry, the court decided the case on the last day of his term. Says uh, Trump, who is 78, is the first former U.S. president to be criminally prosecuted, as well as the first former president convicted of a crime. Smith's election subversion charges embody one of the four criminal cases Trump has faced. This says, president is now a king. So here's what Justice Sonia Sotomayor said. Uh, she was joined by Elena Kagan and Katanji Brown Jackson. Delivered sharply worded dissent, saying the ruling effectively creates a law-free zone around the president. Quote, when he uses his official powers in any way, under the majority's reasoning, he now will be insulated from criminal prosecution. Under orders, the Navy's SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival? Immune. Orders a military coup to hold on to power? Immune. Takes a bribe to exchange for a pardon? Immune, immune, immune. So did my oro. In every use of official power, the president is now king above the law. Here's the problem. It's not just limited to Trump. See, everybody's fear-mongering about Trump. I'm talking about all the former presidents, the current president, whoever wins uh, in November, whether it be Biden, Trump, or third party, whoever, and then down the line from there. You see, the issue is Nobody should have that much power. Nobody. And yet, here we are. And ultimately, what this means is that the parasite class wants their guy or girl, whoever they want in office, to have as much power over their subordinates, the people, as they can. 
to keep them in line. Ultimately, that's what it is. Because they're sick and tired of us becoming uppity and jumping into the streets and demanding our First Amendment rights, our Fourth Amendment rights, our Second Amendment rights. They're tired of it. They don't want us to be as uppity as we have been. In 2020, when we were doing the, the George Floyd protests, we were uppity. They didn't like that. Now, because of a genocide that's going on in Gaza, we're becoming uppity again. They don't like that. So therefore, they're like, mm -mm, we got to give these guys more power. Give them more power. And that power was determined by who? A group of nine people who are not elected by us at all that serve lifetime appointments. That is who just gave the president powers of immunity to do whatever the hell they want. Remember Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Remember what Mace Windu said? I'm saying this about the corporate dictators, the parasite class. They have control of the Senate and the courts. They're too dangerous to be left alive. Who has control of the courts? It's not you. It's not me. And people will say, well, we voted for president, and that president chose the person who's going to be in Supreme Court. Uh-uh. No. We do not choose the president. Because if we actually chose the president, for instance, those of us that were voting in the Democratic Party back in 2020, it would have been Bernie Sanders that would be president right now. But he's not. Because Joe Biden wasn't elected. He was selected, not by us, but by the parasite class. In 2016, Joe, Donald Trump wasn't elected. He was selected by the parasite class. Same thing with Barack Obama. Same thing with George W. Bush. Who, who got George W. Bush into office? Because it was neck and neck. And guess what? Ultimately, who was the deciding factor? Because I'm not going to say much more. But we were supposed to have a president Al Gore. But the Supreme Court judged otherwise. And so now, where are we at? We're at now the Supreme Court giving powers, undue powers, to a president. And making them immune to whatever official acts that they do. So guess what people like Bush and Clinton and Obama, guess what they're doing? They're, thank God. Because they are now immune. They can't be held liable for the war crimes that they committed. Let me finish up. Uh, UCLA School of Law, Professor Rick Hassan, a critic of Trump's efforts to, uh, I'm gonna be careful with saying that, says the Supreme Court has put out a fact intensive test on the boundaries of the president's immunity with a huge thumb on the scale favoring the president's immunity in a way that will surely push this case past the election sorting out the court's opinions and how it applies is, is going to take a while. That's from University Law Professor Erica Hashimoto. No chance of a pre-election pre trial. So this is, this is huge. This is huge, man. And here's the point. Not since this landmark 
Bush v. Gore decision, which handed the disputed 2000 U.S. election to Republican George W. Bush over a Democrat Al Gore, has the Supreme Court played such an integral role in the presidential race? Says if Trump when, when, regains the presidency, he could try to force an end to the prosecution or potentially pardon himself for any federal crimes. <laughs> Rules for thee, but not for me. Sift through all that fanfare, not fanfare, all that fear mongering about, oh, my God, Trump, because the thing is that Trump and Biden, because we or, we actually are in the middle of a second Trump presidency right now. It's just under a different face. So now. Right now we're in 2024, but what who becomes the next president in 2028? 2032, 2036, 2040. They will have the power to do whatever they want as long as it's within the office of the president, as long as it's within the official powers of the president without any type of accountability. This is why this system has to change. And by change, I mean the system needs to be changed fundamentally from the foundation on up. This is why we organize. This is why we are mobilizing. This is why it is absolutely necessary to build dual power. You got to remember the fascists got their ideas from the United States. The United States is the blueprint. And it will always revert back to its original state, which is steeped in genocide, steeped in subjugation. This is why it must be changed fundamentally from the ground up. If not, we're all doomed. Get organized, people. Get organized. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.